40 years, I think that's the, the frightening part. It doesn't really feel like it, not yesterday, but it doesn't seem uh, 40 years ago. But sure, it's uh, fantastic to be back. And uh, I'm sure we'll have a, a few pints of lager and uh, a few reminiscing about uh, the good old days in, in, in 1977. Yeah, it was a fantastic year all round, but culminating in, in winning the Benson Hedges was a wonderful achievement, really. And it was a, it was a fantastic team effort. But we also came close in the championship. Yeah, um, tell me about that final though. What do you remember of how the game panned out? Well, I, I remember we started very well. Andy Stovall played a, played a great innings. And I remember having a, a chat to Andy prior to that game. And I, I suggested to him that uh, maybe he should just tone his batting down a bit and concentrate on staying in, you know, accumulating runs. Don't, don't try and get them too quickly. Give us a sort of solid foundation. Well, he didn't adhere to anything I said. He just went out there, went crash, bang, wallop, and smash 70 in, in literally no time. And, and then he caught a couple of great catches as well. But um, it was a good, good team effort. So he got some runs as well. We all got a few runs. And then um, uh, up front when they batted, I think Brian Braid bowled absolutely brilliantly. Uh, and the combination, I think, uh, really, really set them back. They were scoring it, I think, the first 10, 12 overs. They had about 17 or 18 runs on the board. So, and, and Brainy had taken a wicket or two. So it really put the pressure on them. And it was a good, fantastic team effort by the guys. Obviously, I was going to mention the Gillette Cup win as well. Um, that was a bit of a breakthrough for Gloucestershire, really, wasn't it, in, in the early days of you being with the county? Yeah, 1973. Um, you know, we'd, we'd, played, we'd played pretty well. We'd, in the championship, we'd, we'd ended up fairly high a couple of times but uh, then winning that Gillette Cup was, was a bit of a breakthrough and uh, I think both finals actually uh, when we played Sussex in the Gillette final 73 and Kent in the BNH final 77 I think we were, were the underdogs but fortunately um, on the day the guys, the guys really responded and, and uh, really played well and I, th I think one of the reasons behind that was uh, we had good camaraderie it was fantastic team spirit. Let's go back wind the clock back to when you first came to Gloucestershire why did you come? Why did you choose Gloucestershire? Talk us through that. Well, in 63-64, in um, MCC toured South Africa. And David Allen, a famous of Gloucestershire in England, England Norseman, uh, he was asked by the club to uh, see if there were any young South Africans who might want to come over and play cricket, uh, play county cricket. So he had a, a, a word around with the, the South African players at the time. I think Jackie McGlue, uh, Roy McLean, a few famous South African players. And they, they rec recommended Barry and I. Uh, so we were invited to, to Bristol to play Gloucester's second team because the, the rules in those days were, uh, I think you had to live 18 months out of two years to qualify to play for a county. Um, so we came over and played in the second level, which was fantastic fun. We, we ended up winning that uh, second level championship. But then we also played against South Africa because we were um, not allowed to play county games, but uh, touring side we could play. So it was actually my first ever first class game of cricket. It was against, it was for Gloucester uh, against South Africa, and Barry and I both got 50s, which was which was great. And uh, obviously your your career was slightly, I'm trying to think of the right word, tarnished. But uh, you know you must be disappointed that uh, the apartheid years cost you, you know, maybe a lot of glory in Test cricket. Yeah, I don't, I don't look at it like that. Um, you know, we walked off the cricket field in, in, in 1970 to, in, in support of the South African Cricket Association to take over two non-whites to Australia. Um, but, you know, if, if uh, a, a test career is, uh, helps 40 million people, um, that was, that's really what the, what the crux is about. So, uh, apartheid was unbelievably bad and we were totally against it. Um, and if that played a part, us not playing test cricket played a part in, in almost freeing the 40 million South Africans, then, then that's, that's good. Yeah. The, the seven tests I think it was you did play were all against Australia and you had a pretty good time against them, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, uh, I never toured with South Africa, but we, we played two home series, 66-67, uh, uh, Bobby Simpson captain the side. And then in 1970 was the, the last test series we played before, before the isolation. And they had just come from um, India. They'd beaten India, so they were the unacclaimed world champions, of, as it were. Um, and we literally won all four tests, uh, hands down. You know, I think two tests by innings and quite a few runs, and the other tests by sort of 300 runs. So um, we had a we had a really good side, and it was it was great to to show our strength against um, the so-called world champions. Now, you personally had a unique style, didn't you? You were. A big hitting batsman but as a bowler as a uh, as a young man growing up I remember you as sort of front on super fast n not in the coaching manual at all but it was very effective wasn't it 
Yeah, I mean, I started off um, at junior school. I, I kept wicket and I bowled off spin and I tried to bowl some seamers with a, with a very funny action. I think the coaches all had a look at this lot and there was no way that I was ever going to be a fast bowler. So um, I've done my own coaching, as it were, as a fast bowler. But uh, I think just as I got stronger and could run in, uh, and the peculiar action was I had a very fast arm action. Uh, a lot of people say I bowled off the wrong foot, which, which wasn't true because the, the left foot comes down, you know, when you deliver the ball, as opposed to the right foot, which would have been the wrong foot. But uh, my arm went over very quickly as my left foot came down. So um, with that whirlwind action, it did appear as I could have been off the wrong foot. It was terrifying to watch, actually, it must, and, and I was never at the other end. But uh, you, you were just about the fastest person around, weren't you, in those days? Yeah, I think probably also accentuated by the fact that I was able to swing, I had the ability to swing the ball, um, which made it probably appear a bit quicker than it was. But, you know, by accounts, you can only judge from what the other batsmen say. So it was nice to be known as, as, as pretty quick. But uh, my real asset, I think, was, was the in-swing as opposed, as opposed to the pace. And also it gave me an opportunity to bowl around the wicket and um, more chance of getting LBWs than, than if you bowl over the wicket. So, so that was a great help to me. And uh, Gloucestershire became known as Proctorshire quite commonly, didn't it? How, how, was that embarrassing for you or was that a sense of pride that, that a lot of supporters looked at it that way? Well, I, I suppose a sense of pride that, that supporters looked at it that way, but it, it was a little bit embarrassing because, um, you know, I, I had a few, obviously had a few high moments as other people did. And um, as I said, that, that final, for example, at Kent was a total all-round effort. And uh, uh, so I think it's showing a l little bit of disrespect to the other players to call it Proctorshire. But... Um, you know, a bit unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, now, what are you doing now? I know you've got a book signing here, so that means you've got a book out, but you also do a lot of work in South Africa, don't you, helping uh, the minorities? Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been uh, coaching a, a school called Ottawa School at, uh, at about 20, 20 miles out of Durban. Um, very poor. There's about a thousand kids there. They've got absolutely nothing. And um, I decided to coach there with a friend of mine called Rodney Malumba who, when I was director of cricket in Natal, I got him to Natal and he played a few games for Natal. Um, he speaks the lingo a bit better than I do and, and obviously understands the African way of thinking sometimes, which is very important. Um, and we, we did it for about two years, coaching 40 to 50 of the, of the kids at Ottawa. And then one day the headmistress came in, it was the beginning of the year, three years ago, and uh, wanted to know that the parents and uh, uncles and aunts, because it's a lot of uh, HIV positive kids there, uh, why this little Johnny gets coached and that one doesn't. So um, we had a chat with Rodney and um, decided that we wanted to give the whole school opportunity. So we literally now coach up to a thousand kids during the week, um, which is tough. So the cricket really has gone a little bit out the window, although I, I did have two nets put in there. Uh, so it's more a case of if you've got 180 kids and 200 kids, you know, you, you run around and, 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 and give them an enjoyable time. And, and they just love it. They, they really do. And I've seen them mature and grow. Uh, it's just a great opportunity for them to, 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 to look at, at, at school as, you know, a nice release from some of the hardships that they persevere with. OK. So as you say, you've got the book out. Tell us a little bit about that. What's in it? Well, I, to a certain extent, I just wanted to put the record a little bit straight. Obviously, I talk about my times at Gloucestershire and my, my times when I played for Rhodesia. Um, and then I was match referee for about seven, eight years, and we had a few problems, as you normally do. And the one was when I banned Hobbesian Singh for him and uh, racist remarks to Andrew Simons, which uh, I just tell the story as it unfolded in the book. Uh, Daryl Hare was an umpire, which... Uh, we had a few problems when England played Pakistan with ball tampering. So um, I include that as well. So I think people will find it, find it interesting. Yeah, I'm sure they will because you've, you've just had an interesting life, haven't you, Mike? Yeah, very much so. I've been very privileged. You know, I was a uh, match referee. The last thing, well, the last little job I had was, was convener of the South African Selection Committee. Uh, but prior to that was a match referee. And then did a lot of uh, TV commentary work with, with, with the Sky guys mainly. And prior to that, I was director of cricket at uh, Natal, at Northampton, and at uh, Free State. But just after that, I coached South African cricket as well. So it's been busy.